Well, thanks for clicking on to the Saturday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. We are starting to see the stratosphere expand, the troposphere somewhat contract, as we see the ongoing minor sudden stratospheric warming event taking place at the moment above our heads at about, um, what, 50 kilometres uh, up. We are seeing a strong warming coming off Siberia at the moment. We're seeing the deflection of the vortex towards the North Atlantic and over towards our portion of the world. And um, as we play through the latest run of the GFS, you can see here that uh, we've got the, this strong whites here indicating some incredible warming coming off the continent of Asia towards the pole, pushing the vortex into the northeast Atlantic almost above our heads. But notice the temperature down to minus 89 Celsius. So it is a strong vortex. It is refusing to give way to this strong warming uh, as we go into the month of February here. We continue to see that the vortex almost it kind of almost reorganizes itself actually over the northeast portion of the Atlantic as we step into the month of February here. And then as we push towards the very end of the loop here, now bear in mind we're approaching the 10th, 12th of February, the vortex um, is getting displaced over towards the northwest of Russia and Cyprus not Siberia, uh, Scandinavia, and the warming is getting forced all the way down over Greenland here. In a sense, that is a good sign, but the, the, the concerning aspect about this is that we're not seeing the vortex weaken enough, but at the very, very end of the loop, you notice here that the temperature within the core is down to minus 70 here, or up to minus 70, actually, I should say. And, you know, that kind of look here could on the face of it just purely face value actually look quite decent because we've got an area of cold over north america we've got the core of the vortex actually over scandinavia here so but you know if you actually look at the overall uh, situation here especially with the mandrillion oscillation going into phases um three four possibly five and six uh that is not a particularly great sign because if you notice here that we are uh, at the moment here in the phase three, it's a pretty strong phase three at the moment here. And essentially that is promoting a fairly, uh, a fairly okay, we've got a, a blocking at the moment across the North Atlantic here. But what we essentially are going to start to see, I think the combination of the Mandrillon oscillation phase three, um, and expected to head into phases four and possibly five. These are warm phases here, the Mandrillon oscillation. They do promote, um, they do promote uh, mild and settled conditions with Wesley is pretty strong. And even if we enter five, five and six here, we have an area of high pressure centered over the UK and over Europe here. So this, folks, is not territory that you want to see the Mandrillon oscillation in. We really want to see it getting into phases 6, 7, and 8. That then tends to promote northern blocking and Greenland blocking. But all is not lost here because what we're seeing going on within the stratosphere at the moment combined with hopefully some progression in the Mandrillon oscillation, we've also got other factors, the eastern Pacific oscillation, the uh, the Western uh, Pacific Oscillation as well. These are all competing aspects that's making this February outlook very, very uncertain indeed. I think, generally speaking, I think the first 10 days of the month, we either have unsettled uh, and the storm track to the north, or we have a fairly uh, strong area of high pressure that kind of settles overhead. And I'll show you the latest run of the GFS in just a second here. But it's the question mark is the second half of February. What response do we see with the stratosphere versus where the Mandrillon oscillation is going to rotate into? Uh, I really am a little bit unoptimistic now with regards to this setup here. If the GFS is correct and it's indicating that it slowly creeps through phases four and five and six, those are all unfavorable phases for any type of locked in cold pattern for the month of February. And really, you know, even this, this, the, the situation with the stratospheric warming that we're seeing, it's not overly favorable. This is the 10 millibar level here. This is another look at the same situation here 
of the GFS Ensemble. And you've got this, this strong warming taking place at the moment. This deflection uh, of the PV towards the Atlantic here, to me that suggests that we, if we do have some sort of a reflection between stratosphere and troposphere, that there would support, um, you know, region uh, across the Azores to the Europe region. We would have more negative up towards Iceland here, and we've got a straight westerly flow off the uh, warm of the normal Atlantic, and that is my fear here. Notice here the ten millibar level at one hundred and sixty eight hours. You know the polar vortex is kind of same idea as what I showed you with the 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 weather charts version of the same situation here so you've got the same setup here uh, as, as i'm showing you here in this other chart this is the inset model and uh, as we progress out to um the 240 hour you do have warming over greenland if you notice here subtle warming the core of the vortex is over europe here but uh, there's a lot of other aspects that need to be taken into consideration with this here but if you look at the 50 millibar level here, so this is looking down closer to the troposphere. This is the current setup here that we've got. So we've got the strong warming over um, over the North Pacific, over the north portion of North America. The core of the vortex is situated close to Iceland here. And therefore, that promotes a positive North Atlantic oscillation and a firmly westerly driven pattern. Notice here this warmth across the Azores and Europe as well. It really does closely reflect the upcoming five-day period. And then the six to ten, in fact, you notice here that we start to see the trough deepen over the north portion of North America and also the North Atlantic. Notice here the strong ridge here uh, over the British Isles. So that almost has somewhat of a phase five and six look to it. If you look at the North Atlantic pattern for the 6 to 10 day period, to finally the 11 to 15 day, you can see here that this is quite reflective of um, the, the, the situation here as we go forward. So let's look at 240 hours at, uh, at 50 millibars. You can see what the model is showing. So you can see here that the negative here over the eastern and over generally our side of the Arctic region any positive, any blocking at 50 millibars would potentially uh, hold more over North America and over the eastern side of Asia. And if you look at, of course, remember the time lag here. So the timing of this is not conducive to what I'm showing you here. So what I'm showing you with the, the stratosphere, the 50 millibar level or the 10 millibar level, remember there's a two-week lag in what goes on. But it's certainly... What's going on within the stratosphere at the moment, where the polar vortex is being displaced to, is quite reflective of the 50 millibar level that the models are suggesting. So this is out to, of course, the period between the 7th and the 12th of February here. But there's a lot of things still to play for, folks. And um, uh, while I don't want to just con uh, continuously beat a, a, a cold drum here, and it never takes place because... How often in the past have I, along with other forecasters, promoted cold and it's been continuously pushed back? I think if we do get anything, it's going to be uh, towards the very end of February, even the beginning of March. Remember what March 2013 was like? Remember what March 2018 was like as well? And I know both events were sudden stratospheric warming events, but of course March 2013 was the coldest in 50 years for the British Isles. And, uh, of course, we had the record cold end of February, beginning of March 2018 as well. Both were produced by major sudden stratospheric warmings, and, of course, that's not what we're going to see. But if we can get the Manjelian oscillation into more favourable phases, i.e. 6, 7 and 8, which is, of course, into the west and central portion of the Pacific Ocean, and we get some sort of a tropospheric response with the warming that we're seeing at the moment, Hopefully we can get something a little bit more interesting as we progress towards the end of the month here. But certainly I'm not overly optimistic that we can shake off this uh, very clear path to a positive North Atlantic oscillation. And indeed any blocking, it looks as if it's going to be on the wrong side of the Arctic region for promoting cold here. Interestingly enough, this is what the latest run of the GFS indicates off the weather 
bill or weather charts um, website actually. We get this uh, very stubborn area of high pressure situated between um, Ireland and the Azores. That is forcing the storm track further north. So, of course, that would keep us largely in the milder side of the jet. You can see these areas of low pressure fairly beefy. So, we could have, despite having a, a relatively um, you know, stable pattern as we step from January into February, what we need to watch for is these areas of low pressure kind of right in the top of that high, some pretty deep areas of low pressure that could contain some very strong winds indeed. And remember, we've not seen any named storms yet this season so we'll need to watch that of course but notice the the pressure here near 10 40 millibars keeping the weather generally to the north of the uk then as we progress towards the period here um you know week one into week two this situation becomes a little bit more interesting we deepen the trough over the north atlantic here we start to see a buildup of pressure over the continent here what we essentially want to see is that area of high pressure to lift northwards and then start to reverse the winds over the continent and pull cold air from east to west towards the British Isles here. Some of the mulls are hinting at that, but I'm not necessarily buying into that. I think at the moment that is a, an outlier rather than a trend. But notice, keep an eye on this here. This is the latest run, of course. It could very easily change and it likely will. But look at the period here as we progress towards the, you know, in, in the week 2 of February, got a cold high over Eastern Europe. We've got an area of high pressure over the North Atlantic here. Watch this area of high pressure and watch the pressure rise as it bubbles its way over towards the UK. We've got a pressure promoted by the GFS for Friday the 10th of February at 10.57 the millibars. Now remember what I showed you in the GFS outlook here for the 6 to 10 day period. We've got this uh, mean pressure at 500 millibars very strong indeed centered over the northern half of the british isles deep trough over the 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 north america side of the atlantic here so that is quite interesting to see that reflection between uh, the models here for the same period of time but certainly that would be a very significant area of high pressure not necessarily a mild one let's have a look at the 850 temperatures here because it does have some very colder on the eastern flank of that, pulling out of the Arctic, around it, and in towards the southern half of the British Isles here. So there is still reason to be optimistic here, folks, but I'm showing you what I'm seeing, and we have got this fight between warm phases of the Manjulian Oscillation, the strong warming at the moment that is not favourable for the British Isles in the longer term. What we need to see is that warming, you know, progress from trop uh, stratosphere down through the troposphere over greenland and remember a couple of run uh, a couple of days ago i showed you the run of the gfs that had a big strong blocking over uh, scandinavia that actually retrograded towards greenland here so there is all to play for when it comes to this second half of february i think the first half is looking more and more likely to be Either a mixture of unsettled and settled, but generally on, on the face of it, uh, you know, milder than normal. But it's all to play for during the second half of the month as we start to see the response of these uh, various climate drivers take holds here. So that's it for today. I do appreciate you watching and hopefully I'll be back again tomorrow with more. I, I hope to also release the February forecast tomorrow, if not early Monday. So stay tuned for that. Please like, please share, and please, of course, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Bye for now.